me in the book of Luke. Luke chapter 19. I am so glad for the word of God. I, I said this on a Sunday night. I want to share this with you. If, if you don't just have a lot of time, just sit down and read, or maybe your eyes are more than 50 and you can't because it'll make a font that size. Uh, you need the Bible. You need the word of God. You need to hide the word in your heart. Can I get an amen? How do I do that, Pastor? There are tremendous apps out there. There are Audible apps if you have the Audible account. Uh, it's worth it for this one book alone. It's called the ESV Bible. It's the English Standard Version Bible. You can get it in King James as well, but the reader on the ESV is incredibly good. And when he reads, he brings you into it. It's not over-dramatized. It's just a good, good reading. But I would encourage you. I have found myself just, I, I, I don't turn anything else on. It's just constantly listen to it. And I find it's a great help. I've been in Leviticus. How many have read the book of Leviticus? How many read the book of Leviticus and you were like, because I mean, it, it gets, it's crazy busy. But what it showed me was God really hates sin. Why, why does God hate sin? God doesn't want me to have fun. No, God doesn't hate sin because he doesn't want you to have fun. He hates sin because it separates us from him. The reason God, and people say, no, God doesn't hate sin. Yeah, he does. He despises it because sin is separation. Come on. God wants to bring us together. Everybody got that shout all right. So anyway, if you want to download that, it's incredible. I get no commission off of that. I just thought it'd be a help to you. Luke chapter 19, verse number one. Everybody got a shout yes. yes. And he entered into Jericho and was passing through, speaking of Jesus. And there was a man named Zacchaeus. Everybody say Zacchaeus. You can pronounce it however you want. I don't care if you do it with a modern translation or you just do it the best you can. Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus, I don't care. However I pronounce it, it's probably going to be wrong. There was a man named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was rich. He's also referred to in many translations as a publican. Not a republican, a publican. Some may argue he belonged to the other party. I don't know. He was a chief tax collector and was rich. And he was seeking to see who Jesus was. Anybody know anybody that needs Jesus? He was seeking to see who Jesus was, but on account of the crowd, he could not because he was of small stature. So he ran on ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was about to pass that way. Will you bow your heads and hearts? Father, today, if we've ever needed your unction, your anointing, your help, your strength, your power, your touch, we need it today. We need your healing. We need your grace. We need your power to preach the word. Lord, I believe there are people here today that need to hear what you've been laying on my heart throughout this week and particularly throughout this morning. I believe, God, you're going to touch our hearts today. I pray for the ears of the hearers to be alert to the word of God and deaf to the things of the world. Those that would distract, I pray every distraction be brought low, and I pray that the attentiveness of the body of Christ would be at an all-time high. I pray for those who are watching online, whether even even now in this service time or throughout the week coming up or the months ahead that the word of God would be quick in their heart and would stir them in the name of Jesus. I pray right now for each one that is here. May the ears of the hearer be alert. May the mouth of the speaker be sensitive. May I say nothing more and nothing less than what you would have me to say. Guard the doorpost of my heart that nothing would come out of it but what brings glory and honor to Jesus. And Father, we give you all the praise and all the glory for that. And the church shouted amen. And amen. Look at your neighbor and say, Zacchaeus was a wee little man. How many remember that song from when you were a child growing up in Sunday school? How many remember when you Sunday school was a thing? Amen. We still have that, by the way. Zacchaeus was a wee little man, and a wee little man was he. He climbed up in that sycamore tree for the Savior he wanted to see. And as the Savior passed that way, he Looked up in that. He said, for I'm going to your house today. You know, the first time I learned that song, I was making macaroni noodle plates in VBS. Remember those, Ange? That's what we used to do in vacation Bible school. We'd take a paper plate 
and glue macaroni noodles to it. Mine always had holes in it because I, I said need them. Something about that Elmer's glue and a good dab of macaroni, man. It'll set you on fire. <laughs> Anybody else ever do that? Come on, wave at me if you've ever done that. You didn't, you just missed out on life. How many of you just take them off the plate and throw them at all the kids in the room? I see those hands. These altars are open today for you. Zacchaeus. Everybody say Zacchaeus. When you study and look at the life of Zacchaeus, you can't help but be just amazed by his passion to know Christ. I want to key in on a few words today. I'm going to try to stay focused as I can so that I can get you where we're going and get you out of here before one o'clock. The Bible says that Jesus was passing through Jericho. Now, understanding Jericho's layout, this is not the same Jericho that the walls came tumbling down because the walls had come tumbling down. Another kid's church favorite song. With me? It wasn't the same walls. As a matter of fact, Jericho, there was a curse upon Jericho that anyone who rebuilt Jericho would live under a curse and God would judge them very harshly. Because when God tears something down, don't try to put it back up. Don't make me preach that. Some of y'all whining and crying about some things that have been changing in your life. God knows what he needs to position out of the way. Sometimes he moves things. Sometimes he moves people to get you where you can get a hold of God. Can I get an amen? Sometimes we try to restore relationships that God don't want restored. Sometimes we go back after things that we don't need to go back after because it's out of the way because God took it out of the way because he doesn't want you to be encumbered with the cares of this life. Can I preach it right now? There are some of you today that need to stop running after those things and start praising God because God is remove some stuff and maybe that stuff is an individual maybe that stuff is a problem situation but whatever it is leave it in the hands of God and go after God can I get an amen oh hallelujah the Bible says that there would be a curse upon anybody who tried to rebuild Jericho. So there was no rebuilding of this city of Jericho. The walls had been smashed flat. As a matter of fact, in today's culture, they have found the old Jericho walls. And it is not that they were knocked over. They were literally flattened as though somebody put their foot on them and tamped them into the ground. Now, that's another message for another day, but I want to tell you, this is not that Jericho. So they went a few miles away from that Jericho, and they rebuilt a city and named it Jericho. Thereby uh, moving away from the curse, they had a city that was a very, very important city in that region. As a matter of fact, if you look at it, the road would come down like this centered aisle. It was a road that passed from the north to the south. When you came into Jericho, you didn't come in east to west. You came in north or south. There's only one one way in, one way out. If you're going that way, you're going to have to either turn around and go back the way you came or keep going forward. Zacchaeus knew the layout of the city better than anybody did. He had been through every square inch of that city, collecting the taxes from the people of Israel. So he knew the area and he knew the layout of the land. Let me tell you right now, it's important for you to understand, there's a place where you can find Jesus. There's a place where you can touch God. There's a place where your life can be radically changed, but you've got to know the lay of the land. And if you've been watching the signs of the time, the signs are not the indicators of where we are particularly, but more of what is coming. I'm glad I know who is coming, not just what is coming. Can I get an amen? So we're watching the signs. So Zacchaeus is watching all of this. He's been through every square inch of this city. He knows where every rich person is and every poor person. And all at once there's a crowd in Jericho and Zacchaeus is trying to figure out what is this all about? What meaneth this. So he begins to ask questions. What's going on? Where's the crowd? Who? Where's the money? How can I get an offering out of this group? What can I do to collect taxes from this group? He's trying to find out what the commotion is about. When suddenly somebody mentions the name of Jesus. I don't care if you're a tax collector, if you're a Republican or a Democrat. I don't care what you are. If you're looking for somebody that can change your life, brother, he's better than money. Can I get an amen? He's better than the wealth of this world. I 
I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold. I'd rather have Jesus than riches untold. You can have this world, but I'll take Jesus. You can have the pleasures of this life, but I'll take Jesus. You can have the stuff that will burn with the fires of God's judgment, but give me Jesus. Somebody lift your hands right now and say, I just want Jesus. Give God a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Mm. Give me Jesus. So Zacchaeus, here's the commotion. <laughs> Man, he, he's trying to figure out what this is all about. But Zacchaeus was what? A wee little man. Oh, do you mean he was Irish? <laughs> no, he wasn't Irish. <laughs> Didn't mean he was a wee little man like an Irish kid. He was... Maybe he was... I don't know. I don't know. Maybe he was. Who knows? But either way, this wee little man has a bigger little problem. And that is, how can I get in the path? Let me, ask, let me ask it again. Zacchaeus looks at that and he said, I know where he's going because I know he's not turning around. The crowd around him is not going to allow him to go back. So he's going to come through. And if he's going to come through, I know where I can see him at because I can't see him down on the level where everybody else is at. I've got to find myself a position where I can get in the path. I want to back up and I want you to hear that word in verse number four. So he ran on ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him for Jesus was about to pass that way. Can I tell you right now, if we learned anything under the COVID attack, it is this. We can be controlled. We can be herded. We can be blocked out and made to walk six foot behind the person in front of us. We can be forced to wear masks. We can be forced to operate in ways we never operated. We have been driven behind fences and forced to walk into Walmart one person at a time while they give us a number and tell us it's okay. But brother, I'm going to tell you something. We understand herd. We understand what it's like to be forced into a small area. This is the word of the Lord for this church today. God is about to show up. God is about to do something incredible. We're about to step into an age of the miraculous, an age of divine deliverance, an age of power, an age of authority. May I remind you, Jesus is not coming back after a dead, dried, petrified, mortified, twice dead, plucked up by the roots church. He's coming back after a glorious church. My God in heaven, he's coming back after an on fire, Holy Ghost church without spot or blemish. He's coming back after a church that's been fire baptized, anointed of the Holy Ghost. He's coming back after victory. He's coming back after a believer that has faith, that has power. Amen. Sick and tired of this seeker sensitive mentality that's trying to get us to dumb it down and numb it. But I've come to tell you, it's not time to quiet down. It's time to get on fire. It's time to get to an upper room until Holy Ghost power endues the body of Christ. Oh! The stanchion. The stanchion. Would you run and grab a stanchion for me? You were thought, thinking I was going to make him come up here and be the wee little man. <laughs> Wasn't you? Am I telling the truth? Yes, sir. Got his thumb up. Thought never entered my mind, but 14 times. <laughs> He's bringing a stanchion up. How many know what a stanchion is? Not a stanchion. That would be your teenager who doesn't bathe. A stanchion. You, you say, Pastor, what, what's a stanchion? I want to show you one because you need to understand something. It is an object that forces you into a path. I wanted to illustrate this this morning, but I, I really anticipated a huge crowd like we have. So I knew better than to do this because it would bottleneck everything. How many understand the bottleneck? Come on, how many understand the bottleneck? What a bottleneck is, is when you can't, you're being forced into a small area. 50,000 cars pull up at Walmart Supercenter, but you can only go in one at a time. See, we didn't understand this two years ago. We understand it now. The control factor. Everybody say control. Now watch this. I'm going to show you something. This is incredible. How many hunters in the house? How many of y'all are hunters? How many were not successful, but you're still a hunter? And my hands up. So if you're a hunter, you understand the terminology that I'm about to use. Uh, it's called the funnel. Everybody say the funnel. 
How many know what a draw is? Anybody know what a draw? Deer hunters, you know what a draw is. How many know what a finger is? If you're a deer hunter, you know what a finger is. It's a jet of wood that pokes out into the field. Get on the jet of woods and shoot whatever comes through. Deer will stay in that line. A draw, everybody say draw. Pastor, I didn't come here to hear a message about deer hunting. I want to hold on to you. I want to show you something. Those of you who are deer hunters will recognize the value of the funnel. It's generally the place where deer cross, deer crosses from one section of land to another. Rather than go through the open wide field to, from point A to point B, watch what they'll do. Here's what deer will do. They'll go through a draw. A draw is a low spot on the land like a large ditch. There's one on the property that I hunt. And there's a pond at the top of the hill. And coming down the hill, there's a line of woods that's just really narrow. But it's got a draw in the middle of it. It's got a low spot down the middle of it. So the deer made a trail in that low spot so they can avoid getting shot by the 300 Magnum Browning in the open field. Don't tell me they're ignorant. They're pretty smart. Bring that stanchion on up, brother. Bring that stanchion on up. You got another one out there? You almost grabbed it, didn't you? Holy Spirit dealt with you. You didn't hear him. Is it outside? No, I, I can make one. I got one. Stanchion. You go to the theater. You go through the area where there's a stanchion. A stanchion is forcing you into a draw. It's forcing you into a funnel. It's forcing you into a place. And if you're wise, you'll study the funnel, deer hunters. You'll understand the pattern because once you understand the pattern, deer will stay in that pattern. They don't really get out of the pattern much unless they're in the rut. Now, I'm not going to get into all that, and for that, you ought to be grateful. But the truth of the matter is, it is the funnel that if you're going to hunt in the open fields, you look for a place where they're forced into a small, refined area because in doing so, they become a person or a deer that can be easily shot if you can get in a, sh a shot through the woods. Still with me? How many have lost anybody? Pastor, how'd you get from Zacchaeus to this? Because Jesus was in a funnel. Zacchaeus understood something. There's one path. If he's coming from north to south, he's got to come through here. I've studied this thing. I know what I'm talking about. Now watch this. I want to play this out for you just for a moment. If you see the stanchion, you see the crowd becoming the funnel that is pushing Jesus into this path. How many believe Jesus has a pattern? Oh, hallelujah. He'll never stray outside of his word. This messes with camera operators. I'm still here, don't worry. Now, so if Jesus is this crowd, let's do this. You're Jesus, you're tall, nobody can miss Jesus, stand up. Would you three guys right here, Brother Al, do you feel like helping me? Randy, will you help me? I want you guys to just gather around Jesus. Yeah, just, just gather right around Jesus. So a couple of you get behind him. Ben, help him out, would you? Troy, would you help him out? Just get behind Jesus. Now, if, if I'm going to figure this thing out, if I'm going to come to a re realization of Jesus, if I'm going to have a revelation of Jesus in 2021, if I'm going to have an awareness of the Lord Jesus Christ this year, and just as we close this year, moving into 2022, I better figure out where's the funnel? Where is it that God's going to be coming to? And if I can figure out where God is moving, then I can get in the path of the outpouring. But if I'm over here and, and the only victory I get is when I watch it on TV, if the only victory I get is when I watch it on the internet, if the only church I get is when I hear about it on the radio, I'm missing out because he wants to come to you. Jesus is coming your way. He's coming your way. He's coming your way. Somebody shout. So the crowd begins to move. Now, Zacchaeus, he's watched this. He sees the pattern. No indicator that Jesus is coming back. As a matter of fact, this may have been his last trip through. You do not know the hour of your visitation. You do not know the hour of your visitation. 
We take for granted. It's church this week, church next week. Church next week, church next week. If we didn't learn from last year, we better learn. There's a world that wants to shut us down. But is there anybody here right now that will say, he ain't closing the church no more. We're alive. We're staying with it. And if you're watching online, the church is not going to close the doors. Can I get an amen? As long as the lost soul's lost and a seeker's seeking, we're going to preach. We're going to gather. We're going to lift up Jesus. Can I get an amen? Amen. The patterns are showing us that Jesus is about to do something in an incredible way in the modern church. Yeah, and I'm hearing it, honestly. I'm hearing it from ministers all across the country. There's an awareness. There's a sensitivity. There's an alert spirit. I feel like something's about to happen. I know something's about to happen. I can't put a finger on it, but I believe we're about to see blinded eyes open, deaf ears unstopped. Come on, somebody. I believe we're about to see what God promised we would see in the last days, saith God. I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. I feel in my gut there is a divine revelation coming to the church. All I need to do is recognize, number one, he's only going to come that way. Stay with me. Everybody's trying to get Jesus. Oprah says he'll come a million ways. You can use any God. Every God will get you to the same place. It's a lie from hell. There's only one Savior. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. So I've got to understand the way. I've got to know the path. I've got to realize there ain't no other path. He's not coming down this aisle. He's not coming down that aisle. He's not coming down that aisle. He's coming down front and center. How do I know that? Because Jesus cannot be snuffed out, shoved down, pushed out. He is Lord of all. Can I get an amen? And the Bible says there's coming a day when every eye shall see him. Come on, somebody. I'm looking forward to that. So the crowd is indicating something is changing. A couple of weeks ago, the tragedy of Texas, where in this demonic concert on Halloween, many were trampled to death. Three hours. Three hours before the show started, it was satanic, 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 mesmerizing, numbing, driving beat. Suddenly something happens. Pastor, there was a crowd there. Crowds don't always indicate something godly is coming. See, some of y'all get, but pastor, there are churches that run 50,000. Crowds don't always indicate God is there. Because people will go to a show. Come on, people will go to a cinema. Can I get some help today? People will go a place where they can be entertained. And we're not, listen, I'm not trying to be pop or, or arrogant or prideful. I'm simply telling you, this church is not about soothing you and comforting you. It's about preaching truth, winning the lost, sharing the gospel, and letting the Holy Ghost have his way in the house. Can I get an amen? That's what it's about. That's what it's about. But you could have a bigger crowd if you would tone it down. You can find tone down anywhere you want to go. And you get in there. They're coming down the path. Everybody say that way. How many, if I use this terminology, you, all, you find standing there for a few minutes? If I use, yes? Okay. If I use this terminology, you automatically go get a visual image in your mind, going postal. Now, those of you who work for the post office, please, I mean nothing by that. When somebody goes postal, it has negative connotations. So let's not go postal. Let's go Zacchaeus. Touch your neighbor and say, I'm about to go Zacchaeus. Y'all say it again, I'm about to go Zacchaeus. Come on, tell three people, I'm about to go Zacchaeus. 
what do you mean by going Zacchaeus? I've been watching for Jesus. Has anybody here been watching for Jesus? Oh, yes, I've been seeing the signs of the times. Yes, I've been witnessing a lot of things going on, but there's something stirring down deep in my soul that says heaven is about to step down on planet Earth. I'm not talking about the rapture. I'm talking about the end time revival where the draw of the lost are going to see. The lost are going to find him. The backsliders are coming home. I know there's a great falling away, but I know that in the last days, God will pour out of his spirit upon all flesh. Your sons, your daughters, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren. So I've been watching this, and what I see is I see Jesus' movement. And I've determined there's only one way he's coming. It's in the way, the Bible. How does he come? To broken and contrite hearts. To those who hunger and thirst. Come on. Who does he come to? He comes to those who have come to everything and at the end of the rope they've got nothing but him and they turn their eyes on Jesus. Pastor, do I need to get to the end of my rope before Jesus will reach me? No, my friend. You can call upon him for he is near. Draw nigh to him for he's waiting for you right now. So if I'm going to go Zacchaeus, I've got to figure out Where is, come here, help me, Jake. You noticed I got the heavy one. Let's go ahead, it'll go. I'm going to have to know where the stanchion is. I want to know where the funnel's at. I want to know, because if I get in the wrong tree, I said, if I get up the wrong tree, I might miss him. There's a lot of Christians that are getting up the wrong tree. Oh, they, oh, 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 oh God, help me not to preach on this for more than an hour. Tell your neighbor, just any old tree won't do. Oh, you got to be up that assembly of God tree? Not in your life, friend. It ain't no assembly of God tree. You got to get up the church of God tree. No, it ain't the church of God tree. You got to get up the Baptist tree. It ain't a Baptist tree. It is a cross, crucified Savior, the risen Lamb, the King of glory. That's the only tree that matters. Can I get an amen? If you're going to see Jesus, don't climb up the tree of religion. Don't climb up the tree of Baptist faith, Catholic faith, Methodist faith. Climb up the tree that leads you to the cross. Give God a shout if you're glad that on a hill far away, Jesus died. Any stanchion, any pathway that leads you to any other Jesus, the Bible says is a liar. Come on, Come on somebody. I said the Bible says, if in, Paul said this, if I or an angel of God comes and preaches anything other than what you've already seen and heard, that spirit is a spirit of Antichrist. Get it out of the way. And I'm going to go ahead and preach it today. We need to get back to old-fashioned Bible preaching. Can I get an amen? We need some sons of thunder that are not calling down the fire of God to destroy, but they're calling down the fire of revival. Can I get an amen? We need some men and women of God that care less about impressing and more about touching. So they come, look at your neighbor and say, aren't you glad he came your way? No. Come just a little closer because Zacchaeus understood, number one, Jesus is coming. Number two, he may not come again your way. I know this is old fashioned. I'm going to tell you something. We better quit taking for granted the grace of God. 
That goes to the preachers as well as the laymen. Can I get an amen? Quit taking, but, 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 but grace, grace, grace. Hear me. God's been dealing with me. I've been listening to the Old Testament and man, I've heard about the blood, the blood, the blood of the old covenant to cover man's sin. But brother, don't let that blood be trod underneath your feet. Honor the blood. Set. Come on, somebody. Give praise for the blood. I know it was the blood for me. God hates sin. And Zacchaeus was the chief of sinners. Anybody here know what that feels like? Wave at me. You feel like, man, I, I was at the bottom of the bucket. Come on, anybody else? <laughs> well, there's a lower spot than where you've been. I pray you don't have to find it before you get right. But Zacchaeus is position himself in the right tree. Mm. Are you positioned for the revival God wants to send? Or are you just hoping you're here that Sunday? Has anybody ever said these words? If you have, you can slip your hand up and be honest. Liars go south of here. Have you ever said, why is it they always have the best services when I'm not there? <laughs> Raise your hand if you've ever said that. I'm not suggesting you've answered your own question. I'm just. <laughs> Hello. Why is it? Why does God always do that? I've heard people say it mad. Yeah. Well, come on, I always miss them. <laughs> I don't know. One out of four, you think you get it right one time or another. <laughs> Some of y'all ain't laughing. <laughs> I mean, you got 25% chance of making it. Show up four times straight, you might get blessed. Amen. Miss one time, and that's a service. People run the aisles, dancing all over the place. Holy Ghost, chin dick going on. Come on. Zacchaeus positioned himself. I want to stay there. I want you to look at this. He positioned himself. Well, how come God don't make me? Because God doesn't want to force you into the funnel. He wants you to choose the right tree. Was this the only sycamore tree in the land? No. There's, they're all over the place in that region. Not these big sycamore trees that I'm allergic to over here in Missouri. These are different, different type tree, but they're sycamore tree. And they were everywhere. So he could have climbed up any tree, but he chose the one in the way. Is there anybody here today that'll say, Jesus, if you're going to move, you're going to have to go through me. I'm going to ask you that again because some of y'all need to answer in the affirmative, but you're afraid to because you don't quite understand what I ask. I saw your eyes. It's like, mm -hmm. Is there anybody here today that has been watching, studying, noticing the patterns and you realize there's about to be an explosion of God's presence? Yes. Wave at me if you've been, how many have been feeling that? Second, how many of you have made up your mind, God, if you're going to move, you're going to have to move through me? Come on, wave at me. That's my hands up. My head. Oh, God, it's up. I want, Brother Rodney, I want, I want. Now, listen, in order for that to happen, I'm going to have to start getting some prayer meetings going again. And I'm going to have, come on, somebody. I, I've been waiting for others to do it, but I can't wait anymore. So the Holy Ghost has been dealing with me to begin that 5 o'clock morning time of seeking the face of God. Is there anybody that would join me in prayer at 5 o'clock every morning to seek the, come on, somebody. Is there anybody that will get a hold of God? Is there somebody that will come out on Saturday night Friday nights, Monday night, Tuesday night. Okay, is there anybody that is willing to study the pattern so you can know the proper position? Thank you, guys. Watch this. How many, I hate to go back to hunting, but most of y'all have blurry, swollen eyes from it, so... I would leave for the stand at five in the morning, sometimes 520. 
Bow season, Thursday morning, Friday morning. Rifle season, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, five o'clock in the morning. Now, maybe my stand's not quite like some of y'all's. You got these Taj Mahal's. Mine's missing the Taj and the Mahal. <laughs> Northern Missouri is cold. And I'd hear all the other guys, oh, they're going to be moving midday, 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 midday. Oh, shut up. <laughs> and then midday, midday. How do you know they didn't move midday? Because I was there. Sitting in my draw. I'd go in every, every day at about 11.30 and get a sandwich and drive right back to the woods. Committed. Should have been. 12 hours a day. 12 stinking, grueling, frigid hours a day. I've spent. Look like one of those triggers on a water machine, you know, the water sprayer. It's like... You know when the deer came? 11.30. Right after I left. I'm convinced they have meetings, Cecil. I believe the deer get together. Hey, fellas. Got word. He's going to be going back to the truck at 11.30. It's cross. Is it possible that God is trying to position you and all you need to do is look for the place he's at and get in line? The story is this, and I close. Zacchaeus, this wee little man, this wee little man was he who climbed up in the sycamore tree for the Savior he wanted to see. I think there were probably... a. 150, 200, maybe 1,000 people in front of Jesus because he was thronged about. I had to change translations because the one translation says because of the press and I knew people would be saying, you mean ABC was there? They haven't covered truth in years. I'm sure they weren't. <laughs> so this throng of people is leading the way and another throng behind him and all around him, the street is clogged. Everybody say it with me, the street is clogged. Can you imagine the look on the front people's face when they saw the guy who had just been to their house collecting taxes hanging out on a tree limb? Can you hear them jeering? What are you doing up there? Stinking thief. He was a thief. He admits it. I don't think Zacchaeus says anything to them because he's at a point now where he's not up the tree for them. He's not even worried about anybody else. This is about his Jesus who's coming. See, he, he's not blinded by any of the noise or the confusion or the chaos in the crowd. His eyes are now fixed on the center of attention. And he's watching him. They're mocking. They're laughing. He's pulled up in the limb as high as he can get. It's him. It's Jesus. And finally the crowd gets through and Jesus comes in the middle of the crowd and Jesus stops the throng 
under a sycamore tree. Stops everybody in the city. Jesus stopped everything for one little guy who knew the position and the place but wasn't in it for either position or place. He was in it for the person. And Jesus looks up at him. I think Jesus saw him a long way off like Nathaniel. I saw you while you were under the tree. I saw you a long way off. As a matter of fact, I'll back up and tell you this. I believe that God planted this sycamore tree. And when it started to grow this way, a strong wind blew it back this way. Because God knew you. I mean, Zacchaeus was going to be at a position where you needed a better view. Today I've come to tell you, he's planned this service. Perfectly designed to position you to see the person. And what does he say to him? Zacchaeus, you know the song? You come down from there. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> See, Jesus, the yeah. I, And maybe he said something like this. Hey, Zach, what's happening up there, bud? <laughs> Zach said, I just tried to get where I could see you because I'm, I'm, I'm we. <laughs> <laughs> he said, come on down from there, Zacchaeus. For I'm going to your, your house. I'm going home with you. I'm, I'm, com I'm coming to your house. Now, automatically, some of you are thinking, okay, I better rush home quick because I need to clean it. <laughs> Jesus planted the tree that he knew would become the vantage point from which a little guy could meet a big savior.